Are you looking for new books to read? Do you like finding a new special author? Are you tired of the same old books from the same old authors? Well then, welcome to Discovered Wordsmiths, a podcast where you can hear from fantastic new authors. Join Steven Schneider as he finds and talks to authors you may not know, but authors that have worked hard to write great new books. Hear about their book and why you should check it out. So sit back and listen to today's Discovered Wordsmith. All right, let's go. So, Paul, welcome to uh, Discovered Wordsmith. How are you doing today? Just peachy. It's a beautiful day. My son just turned one. All is well with the universe. That's Yeah, that's a good thing. Good, fun time. Birthday cake tonight, I take it? Yeah, you know, I mean, he doesn't know. He's one. He just, right. you know. He still eats random things he finds on the floor. He doesn't have a discerning. You know, it'll be fun for you guys. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. So, Paul, uh, before we get going, talking about your book, tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where you live, what you do, some things you like to do outside of writing. All right. Well, my name is Paul Bahu, and um, I'm turning 40 next month. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's still kind of surreal. I, you know, people say, "Oh, you're turning, you're, you know, you're getting your next decade." I'm like, "Ah, my knees feel like they're 60, so I'm already, you know, I'm already there." Um, no, I, my brother and I own a recycling company. Um, we have a plant in California, a plant in Dallas. That's what I do with uh, most of my time. Uh, I am married with two small children. They're both quite wonderful, except at nighttime when they want to just rave all night and not sleep. But uh, uh, that's how children are. Uh, right. Rumor has it. Uh, and then when I'm not doing that, I write. Um, I write science fiction, horror, short fiction, and the occasional dad joke. Oh, good dad jokes. I was talking to Mark Leslie LeFave a while back. He's famous for his dad jokes. So I've sent him a couple. So I'll have to send it's, you a couple. <laughs> oh, I love them. You know, I love dad jokes because, you know, laughter is great. But, you know, just the the, the eye roll and the groan, that's the... That's the ticket. That's when you know you really landed it. Yeah. Th- there's actually a, a dad joke game out. That's like a uh, last man standing dad joke game. Um, oh, man. I, was yeah. get I, have, I have a list on my phone I call the dad dad base. Oh. And uh, I got all, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a pun within a joke uh, oh. wrapped in uh Wrapped in goodness, wholesome goodness. So, you know, I, 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 my, my, my days of being edgy are long behind me. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. You, you hit that way. The kids will start looking at you soon going, yeah, dad, come on. You're, you're too old. Oh, my daughter already thinks I'm really weird, but uh, she's weird too. So, you know, <laughs> That's good. this is straight so, down the line. With having a, a family, young family, I know how difficult that is. And this recycling business with your brother, what made you want to start writing? So I've always enjoyed writing. I've been a writer for a very long time. Um, uh, even when I was in when I was in middle school, sixth grade, I won my school writing contest. Beat all the other kids. Congrats! Um, their stories were terrible. Mine was slightly less terrible. <laughs> slightly less terrible, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I think mine actually had a beginning, a middle, and the end. So like that alone just took, put me over the top. Forget about any ability with prose. Right. Um, and, uh, no, I've always been writing, uh, the beginning of my career, you know, I own a recycling business now, but when I got graduated from college, it was a grant writer. So I was writing grants for like 10 years, uh, in the recycling industry. And so, you know, that, that's definitely a lot of time spent in that medium. And, uh, I developed a, a short story. This, 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 the book in particular, we're going to talk about, um, uh, sunset distortion, the pyramid at the end of the world. Oh, nice. <laughs> is, uh, it started off as a short story that I wrote in college. Then I tried to develop it into a comic with a friend. Kind of fizzled out. But uh, I was in rock bands for a very long time. I don't know you can tell I got the long hair. Let, let, me, me, let, me, let me let the glory out here. Nice. Uh, nice. I'm jealous. Go. So, yeah, I played what? in rock bands for a long time. And, what uh, instrument? I play, bass. I play bass? bass. I play guitar. I can sing a little me bit. Too. You, you play bass? Yeah, bass, yep. Yeah. Picked right, it up in high it? school. What do you, what do you play? What's your, what, what do you have? Uh, I have a five string Yamaha and mm-hmm. my very first bass still was a Westone. I still have it. All right. You always have to hold on to your first bass. You know, yeah. you'll collect them and they'll come in and out, but your first bass, never get rid of it. Right. Right. What do you got? Uh, I, I have a Fender jazz bass. That's always been my favorite. I just love, it has that, to- that like that perfect tone for rock music. It just, 
when I first started, my g- friend guitarist, his guitar teacher let him borrow her bass, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what I was playing, but it was a 1965 Fender Precision. And oh, I was like, the 60s oh, B basses. If I could get that bass now, it's mm-hmm. yeah, beautiful bass. Oh, yeah. P basses are phenomenal. Also great. Awesome sound. Uh, but I play guitar. I know I'm okay at singing. My wife's a better singer than I am. We actually had a band together. Uh, we were called the infamous they. Cool. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the they, the, the mysterious people behind all the world's problems. Now, did you write like an origin story for the band? I mean, it just screams to right. me that you should have written an origin story. <laughs> well, the album was called The History of the Future. And uh, <laughs> a quasi-concept album um, about uh, transcendence, if you will. Okay. And um, yeah, it was kind of like psychedelic indie rock, kind of in the, I always tell people, it's kind of in the vein of like, uh, it was like, I would say like Pink Floyd meets TV on the radio, if, if you know who that is. Okay, was. okay. Everyone knows Pink Floyd. Right. Uh, actually, here, fun little thing. So my, my brother and I, our business, we're called Global Plastics Recycling, and we do fun shirts that we make for all of our employees, you know, and here's our new, here's our new one. You ready? Yeah. Remember, we're a recycling company, so. Worldwide reveal. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Global oh, Plastics I'd, Recycling. I, I'd grab a copy of that. That's nice. You grab that one? And that yeah. Bad, huh? Yeah. So we got, we got we got all sorts of ones. We had a we we also did a red hot chili peppers one, you know, with like it's like the asterisk, like the red with the words going around. And so we tried to make like each end of the asterisk like a little bottle, but then it just looked like a COVID uh, <laughs> uh, virus. We're like, ah, uh, well. <laughs> good idea, bad. <laughs> in the but, yeah, um, but um, yeah, so it was kind of in that vein uh, of style of music. It's you can listen to it on Spotify if you want to check it out. But. Okay. After I'll put a that link band, in the show notes. That band broke up right around the time my wife and I got married, and then we started a family. And just you know, doing the music thing was kind of uh, kind of not really in the cards at that point. So I was right. like, I am going to finish this novel. I am going to do it. I'm going to make it happen. And so um, throughout the pregnancy, and while my first child was very little, I just every night I wrote for like two or three hours and made it happen. Willed it into existence. Nice. So tell us again uh, what the book's called and tell us a little bit about it without giving away too many spoilers. All right. So it's called, again, you have to be kind of grand and dramatic when you're saying it, right? Sunset Distortion and the Pyramid at the End of the World. You know, if you can throw some reverb on it or something. I was just going to say that. We should throw some, yeah. I was gonna say delay. That. Just, just, you know, maybe some like lightning sound effects or something. Right, okay. Um. <laughs> So it's a, it's a story about a man named Laser. Um, Laser uh, is uh, he plays guitar in an '80s heavy metal hard rock cover band on the Sunset Strip. He, his, his band Killer Orca almost made it, but didn't. And he he was he just kind of stayed stunted in that part of his life. Okay. So he's living in a van behind the venue. You know, he could go get an apartment if he wants, but he's just he's just. He, he's, he's just absolutely stuck, uh, you know, this um, this idea that, you know, this is who I am. I'm this musician. And so he was never able to really grow as a person. And all of that is shaken loose when he gets abducted by aliens. Okay. <laughs> so he, he's, uh, yeah, he's abducted by aliens and sent on this uh, kind of intergalactic odyssey uh in the, in the, and he gets kind of, he gets mixed up with uh, a couple of shady characters in their search for this artifact that gives its possessor infinite life. But what does infinite life mean? You know, they get into this whole kind of, uh, um, kind of, kind of debate about it. Is it infinite life? Like, uh, like, like Mario, where you die and you just come back. Is it infinite life that you don't age? Is it infinite life? Like you're a zombie and you just don't, you don't die. And so, uh, you know, you have to read the book to find out the deeper meanings of that. Okay. Um, but it's 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 on the humorous side of science fiction. I wouldn't call it hard sci-fi by any stretch of the imagination. It's, you know, less technical speak, more jokes. Okay, nice. So why did you want to write this particular book? Uh, why sci-fi? Why this particular story? 
So I love science fiction. I grew up with science fiction when I was a kid. I mean, my, 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 my dad and I, when I was little, we used to always watch um, all of like the, like Twilight Zone. And then I got into Outer Limits, Tales from the Crypt, um, X-Files, a lot of that kind of, you know, sci-fi mystery horror kind of blended genre, um, weird tales, all these kinds of things. And uh, I, I just, I just love that genre. Like it's, it's limitless. You can do whatever you want. And as long as you stay true to the rules you set within your universe, you create right. the sky's the limit. Space right. is the limit. Keep it beyond right. sky. Right? So, so everything is on the table with that. And, um, I, I, you know, I played in bands for a long time before the band with my wife, I was in a touring band. We were called inverse. You can go, find stuff on the, you know, YouTube or whatever. Um, and we did a lot of touring. We we had a residency at the Viper room. And so I kind of lived that world in that world in my twenties. And so I met a lot of people who, who were very much like, you know, ride or die. They're still living the dream, even though, you know, they're middle-aged and it's, they're still living like they're 20. And, and to some degrees that's great. And to some degrees that's not. <laughs> and you know that kind of concept gets explored in the novel. Um, but yeah, you know, they always say, write what you know. Well, I know rock music and I know science fiction. So I, I married the two and, uh, and I wrote the book. Great. So if someone was trying to figure out if they wanted to read your book, what other books out there would you say it's similar to? Um, so it definitely has the a hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy aspect, just in terms of this guy from earth launched into space and trying to struggling to figure it out on the fly you know so it has that fish out of water element it's definitely a lot of um there's a lot of humor a lot of jokes lots and lots of jokes um so it's, it's definitely lighter side of um uh it's it, it it has its um you know it has its serious moments and it's you know it's more important undercurrents and everything you know you always want to tell a story beneath the story but right. um but yeah, it's, it's it's if you if you like uh, if you like space aliens and jokes, boom, it's for you. Well, heck, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide is one of the, the top books around my house. You know, quoted quite often. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's it's it definitely it has a lot. Like that book really influenced me, and and just uh, you know the humorous side of science fiction in general. Um, I, I like the hard sci-fi stuff, love Star Trek, you know, but, uh, that's not what I create as much. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I always got to make it funny for some reason. Um, what, what's that, uh, McFarlane show that's like supposed to be the parody of Star Trek? Um, oh, 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 the Orville. Love it. Orville, yeah. It love actually, it. it yeah. It's, it's interesting because it started off the first couple episodes really parody humorous, but then they kind of got away from that and turned it into like a real science fiction uh, show. But they still, it, but the, it, yeah, and the jokes became less punchliney and more kind of bespoke into the story, if you will. Yes. You know, I, I always really like that. There's that one episode. Have you have you seen have you seen them? Have you? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, what was that one alien guy? Like they're they're, they're only ma- they're only males in their species. And he finds him on the holodeck and just, he like has these giant orgy scenarios and they walk right, in. Yeah. It's just all these big naked aliens. Like, ah! <laughs> right, yeah. Love that. It, good show. I heard they're doing a third season. So it's supposed to be coming out soon. Yeah. That's what I heard. Along oh, I'm, with I'm ready. I'm ready. Drama reboot again. <laughs> I hey, They got, they got the original voice of Bender. So I'm in. You're happy. <laughs> good. You're replacing Bender. I'm not interested. Right. But, I think uh, that's pretty much everybody. <laughs> Futurama is my favorite show of all time. It's brilliant. Yeah. I would actually say tonally, my novel is closer to Futurama probably than, you know, if I had to pick one thing that it's closest to, it probably lives yeah. in that kind of vein of humor science fiction. Nice. Okay. So is this uh, indie published or traditionally? I self-published it. I went through the whole rigmarole with, I started sending out, all of the, you know, there's like a whole thing you're supposed to do when right. you're getting getting things off the ground as a new writer. And um, I, you know, I, I borrowed a book from my neighbor about because she's she's a she's a college professor who wrote a memoir. And you know, furthest furthest other end of the pool in terms of writing. You know, I'm I'm 
you know, nonsense sci-fi and she's like very serious stuff. Um, and so we were always sharing notes on how to, how to um, try to get our, get our work out there and, and get to that next level. And she's like, yeah, you always have to be sending these things out. And I read the book that she was reading and it's just like, yeah, you have to always treat it like a job. And, 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 you know, you're always sending out, you're going to get denied a hundred times before. And I was just like, yo, I got a business and I have two kids and I do not have the time to do that. Right. So a lot of my experience with music, I kind of um, took that route. So I said, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to put it out myself and I'm going to start my own thing and I'm going to just start building it and build the machine at my own pace. And, you know, if you're out there and you're a new writer and you're just trying to figure out where to start, um, start one step at a time. Don't overwhelm yourself. It doesn't have, you don't have to be, you know, okay. Over an overnight sensation takes 10 years before they're an overnight sensation, right? You right. don't realize it. there's a lot of work that goes into it before you even get any recognition and before you really get anywhere. So don't overwhelm yourself and don't try to burn yourself out because you will. And then you'll just walk away. And then what? Now, the only people that have read your book are your close family and friends. And even then half of them probably haven't read it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, that's probably very so, true. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's, you're, you're building a machine. I, I always liken it to building a business, right? You, you, there's so many things that you have to put in place to make it work and for everything to kind of sync up. And if you don't have all day to do that, if you're not already at a place where you can just, write all day and build your, you know, your brand or your business and your websites and all the other stuff and the loose ephemera of being a writer. Um, you, you know, just do it at your own pace. There's no wrong way to do it. And the, the thing I love about writing is that, you know, you don't need a gatekeeper. You can put things out on your own. You can be successful just, you know, publishing directly through KDP and Amazon and all of that. And so we, my, my neighbor and I now we take different tacks because she is still just, sending out the packets and getting the rejection letters, even if she gets anything at all. And me, I'm just like, no, nope, I'm going my different route. I got my website. It's almost done. PaulBahuWrites.com. It should be up by the time well, this, this, okay. this interview airs. And if not, shortly thereafter. Right. Um, you know, just putting it all together without stressing myself out. And uh, I think that's the key is you got to enjoy the process of anything. Exactly. Yeah, enjoy the process. Amazing. Don't make it overwhelming. Don't make it work. Don't make it, you know, a job. Just do what you love to do, which is right, and then try to help set yourself up to keep doing that. Don't lose yeah. sight of why you're doing this in the first place. Right. Agreed. So what type of feedback have you been getting from readers? Great. I mean, I, I, it's kind of funny. So um, I got, you know, at first, you know, when I first put it out, like all my friends and family bought it and, you know, uh, everyone, they're only going to say nice things. They're not going to be like, it sucks. You're a terrible writer. Just keep recycling. Um, no, no. I got Here's the book to recycle. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Throw it in the recycle bin. Um, no, it's, uh, I've gotten very good feedback. People have really enjoyed it. You know, I've done, I've done probably two dozen podcasts by this point and some of the podcasters have read it and they, and they'll be like, yeah, I love it. They'll gush. Um, I've gotten, you know, some other, uh, I'm now at the point where people I don't know are buying the book. I mean, it's not, uh, I'm, I'm definitely not Stephen King by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, they're, they're um, moving some units, but yes. it's, it's, um, it's largely positive. I got one negative review from someone and it was like, this wasn't what I was expecting. And then they gave me two out of five stars. I'm like, okay, so it's not your genre. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you know, not like the writing's bad. The story is stupid. Nope. Just, I wasn't expecting this, man. So right. I, I love um, when it's like alien attack spaceships from Jupiter. And then someone puts a comment that, well, there wasn't enough romance in it. W where did you get romance out of that title? <laughs> I, let's flip it. Your romance novel did not have enough alien spaceships. Exactly. So <laughs> it always cracked me up. Um, yeah. Yeah. So is this the first of a series or is it a standalone? Yes. It is a five-part series um, because I love taking on gigantic projects. Uh, <laughs> um, like starting a family, right? right. So, um, yeah, it's a five-part. I've already got the whole thing sketched out. Uh, book two is um, probably like 60K words in. So I'm three quarters of the way through it. Although I kind of put it on the shelf for a minute. I've been working a lot on my short fiction. And so I think my next release after this is going to be a collection of um, short stories and novellas and all just kind of okay. put together for your enjoyment. Nice. Okay. Something to get out in between the, 
rest of it. I, I needed a palate cleanser, you right. know, and, you know, I, I think, you know, when you're someone who is creative and you do creative things, be it uh, painting or writing music or write, writing fiction, um, it, there's a, there's a thing that happens when you're recording music. Cause I, I all my analogies always come down to music. Cause that's kind of the, you know, where I was, my creativity was the right. Monster. Is there, there's a, there's a thing that happens when you're recording music is that your ears just get so tired that everything just sounds like a wash and you're trying to like, you're like, is this guitar tone right where it needs to be? Do I need to, you know, get the drums a little bit? And, and you hear it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And it just, it's all white noise at that point. Your brain just can't process it. And, and that same thing happens with writing where you've, you've gone through this chapter over and over and over and over again. And, and you you're, don't really feel like you're making the headway you need. Take a step back, take a breath. You're not on a timeline unless you have a publisher, in which case you're on a timeline panic. No, um, you, 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 you know, you're okay. It's all going to be okay. Um, but just like at the sushi bar, have a little bit of ginger, take a cleanse that palate. And uh, it's always good to have some other stories just kind of there for you to hop to when you need that mental break. And especially when you're trying to do something as complex as a novel, it's right. good to be able to step away. So I want to say about like four months ago, I stopped writing that book and I said, I'm going to just take a long break. And I'm going to start writing some short nice. stories and just kind of forget where I'm at with that book. It, it and, helps and a lot. It so oh, does. So much. And just take a step away. And I'm going to work on some short fiction. And then I started just boom. My creativity was flowing and I was cranking out short stories like crazy. And, um, and I said, oh, okay, this is where my, my head is at right now. So I'm really working on that, that side of it right now. And then once that's done, I'll pop back to the other, the part two of the Sunset Distortion series and I will be refreshed and of clear mind. Nice. Okay. Hopefully. So, Hopefully. Right. <laughs> so if you had a choice, uh, what would you rather do? Turn this into a movie or a TV series? Oh, TV series, definitely. Really? Uh, yeah, would you, it's. Would you go for like Netflix or are we talking ABC? Oh, definitely Netflix. There's a lot of gratuitous <laughs> violence in this thing. Um, right. Lots of lots of monsters getting squished, stabbed, shot, exploded. You know, it's it's uh, uh, it's a uh, um, uh, glee, gleefully gory. You know, it's uh, uh, PG thirteen. There's not really profanity, no like sexual stuff, but um, definitely a, a lot of creatures, big and small, meet their demise over the course of the the book. But the it's it's very episodic because it, it you know it's kind of um, uh, influenced by the Odyssey and just kind of this idea of. Okay you have like a wider kind of arc going on, but really he's, he's kind of experiencing these different slices of life in outer space coming across these different creatures and, and, um, and it all kind of like weaves in together. So it's, you know, in one chapter he's, he's, you know, abducted by, you know, aliens and the next chapter he's abducted by the alien after being abducted by the alien double abduction. Ah! And then, you know, he's, He's sold sold his food to a big uh, big gladiator monster um, who lives in this spooky ass castle. Like it just it, it just it it, it kind of you know goes and goes and goes. And so each it it, it has a certain episodic feel uh, okay. within the context of the wider story. So right. definitely a Netflix type show. Okay, great. So uh, let, let's find out a little bit more about you and your influences. We've already talked a lot music, which is great, but what about reading and authors? What are some of your favorite books and authors? I love Kurt Vonnegut. I think the man was brilliant. Um, I, I, I really appreciate kind of how he approached writing his stories and there would be these aspects of his personal life that would bleed in and his own experience. And you would try to make a wider point. You know, I, 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 People always say like, you know, what's, what's, what's your favorite book? And I'm like, Slaughterhouse Five, it's brilliant. It's the, the greatest novel I've ever read by a mile. Um, and, uh, but even his, his other work too. I, I, I really like Kurt Vonnegut. I think he's great. Uh, I like, I like Chuck Palahniuk. I, I, I like stories that are just kind of left of center and don't really follow like traditional narrative and, and make their own rules and make their own way as they go. I, I really appreciate that. Okay. And uh, where you live, where where did you say you live? Sorry. I live in Temecula, California. Temecula. Southern California's wine country, baby. 
Got it. Do you have any favorite bookstores close to you that you like to go to? Amazon. Okay. <laughs> I I have been fu- fully and firmly um, uh, switched over since the pandemic. And uh, yeah, there's 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 this nice used bookstore that's in town, but I don't even know it's still open anymore. I haven't been there since since COVID. Okay. I I uh, honestly either Amazon or I used to travel a lot for work, so every time I go fly, I'd pick up a book and it, it, you know the little airport stores and just find something interesting and read it while I'm flying around. And, right. uh, you know, so a lot of like the, Do your you know, kids have any favorite books that you've been reading to them lately? Um, my, my daughter, she's almost four. Her name is Sophie. She is, you know, just a magical little gremlin creature. And she wanted me to read the Lorax to her every night for like six months. And I <laughs> yes. just finally got her to get out of it over these last couple of weeks. I'm just like, Hey, Sophie, do you want to read this one instead? And she's like, okay. And I'm just like, oh, thank you. I can probably do more else from memory at this point. I mean, Great yeah. Probably, probably my, I think it's a wonderful children's book and it's a very important message that kids need to, I think, grow up with in terms of, right. you know, sustainability but, and environmentalism and all that stuff. And, and um, you know, yeah, that's what I do for a living, right? So I'll definitely right, push yeah. that. So, you it's, know, maybe that's your own fault. You influenced her choice. <laughs> right, right, right. So, um, oh yeah, she. But but uh, there's another book. It's uh, it's called the Serious Goose. It's uh, his name. He's he, he's one of those like the not the Tonight Show, the other one, the guy who used to host the Man Show. What's his name? Oh, um, he's, he's the one that's not. He's the one that's not Stephen Colbert. What's uh, um, you're at a loss. Me too, huh? Kimmel, Fallon, Kimmel, Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, Kimmel. Okay. So yeah, Jimmy Kimmel wrote it and it's wonderful. It's, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, yes, um, I've seen that. I'm a big, big fan of children's books that can be kind of interactive when you read to your kids and you, you know, it involves a certain amount of them kind of, um, getting engaged with, with the story and how you read the story and present it to them. So, um, that's another good one for your parent. Pick it up. I, I, I get my Paul seal of approval. <laughs> good. Okay, good. So before we move on to talking about some author stuff, tell everybody uh, one last time why they should get your book. Because it's hilarious and amazing. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I'm very proud of it. I, I put like five years into my life into that thing. I went over it cover to cover probably a dozen times, just really dialing in and trying to not, not get too self-indulgent with the pros, you know, I don't want to lose anyone. I want you just to want to clip along and, you know, the jokes hit harder when you're not meandering around too much, right. spending a page to describe what, you know, this, this random laser sword looks like or something, you know, it's, it's, right. but it's, 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 it's fun. It's a fun read. If you want something just to hang out and read on the beach or, you know, something you can crush on a weekend, that's not going to horribly depress you like the rest of the world is outside right now. You know, you need a little, right. little palate cleanser for the soul. That's, uh, that's my pitch. <laughs> okay. So before we move on to author stuff, tell everyone the title of the book, uh, where we can get it, your website, and that type of thing. Uh, Sunset Distortion, The Pyramid at the End of the World. Uh, my website is um, paulbahuwrites.com. Currently in development, should be up soon. Uh, in the meantime, you can find me at facebook.com forward slash paulbahuwrites and come drop me a line. Um, every once in a while, I'll put up a short story or something like that. And um, you can find it on, you know, Amazon and online bookstores. That's how that whole deal goes. You know, right, right. Find, find it on the internet. Everything's on the internet. Life yeah. is easier with the internet. Right. Great. Well, Paul, thanks for sharing the book with us. That sounds like a good, good time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Thank you for listening to discovered wordsmiths. Come back next week and listen to another author discuss the road they've traveled and maybe sometime in the near future, it might be you.